Benjamin Lozano. Today's guest is the CEO and co-founder of SMBX, the Small Business Bond Exchange, a FINRA-registered crowdfunding portal offering debt financing to entrepreneurs and investment opportunities as small as $10 to everyday investors. He'll share insights about his work and his superpower. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. Welcome to the Superpowers for Good show, where we empower you. Ben, welcome to the show. We're thrilled to have you. Thanks so much for having me, Devin. Looking forward to chatting. Yeah, you know, you're doing some amazing stuff at SMBX, but, you know, maybe before we get to that, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got there? Sure, happy to happy to uh, explain. So, you know, as you know, my name is Ben Lozano. Um, my dad's name is Ben Lozano CPA. <laughs> Uh, he he runs a boutique <laughs> financial accounting firm in uh, Southern California, uh, first generation Mexican American, um, you know, specializing in growth planning for small and medium sized businesses. Uh, I worked there uh, growing up. Uh, my brother worked there as your classic, you know, small business accounting firm, and we helped a lot of small business owners um, do growth planning and take out bank loans. And so, sort of, my first experience was helping. Uh, first and second generation, third generation Hispanic Americans, um, you know, grow their businesses. Uh, flash forward a decade, I did a PhD at UC Santa Cruz, um, where they allow uh, and sponsor research that maybe wouldn't have gotten sponsored in other places. And I was literally defending my dissertation as Bear Stearns was collapsing in the 2008 oh, wow. crisis. It, yeah, it was not a good time to go into finance. So I stayed at UC Santa Cruz and built out a fintech research program uh, there with some colleagues after the 2008 financial crisis. And the terms fin and tech were kind of coming together for the first time. So I'm teaching millennials finance uh, after the UC, you know, a- after the um, uh, you know 2008 financial crisis. I've got a sort of a background helping small businesses raise uh, debt financing through bank loans. And then I read the Jobs Act while I was, a, while I was you know, a finance professor. And what the Jobs Act does, which I think people still don't appreciate it enough, is for the first time in the history of modern securities law, it allows a private company to remain private, but issue a public security, so long as they do so on a new type of financial intermediary that's brought into existence by the Jobs Act, it's called a Reg CF funding portal, regulation crowdfunding portal, or a broker dealer that has approval by the regulators to operate one. Okay, because of my background in small business accounting, I didn't think about um, the Jobs Act as enabling equity crowdfunding so much, although I, I think that's a really cool uh, business model built on top of the Jobs Act. You know, some risky startup issues equity capital to the crowd and, and so on. For me, the you know, because of my background and my co-founders' backgrounds in, in capital markets, for us, the bigger, more interesting, valuable business model we could build on that was uh, creating what we call a small business bond marketplace. So because our backgrounds are in, you know, capital markets and, and financial engineering, and in my case, uh, we engineered this asset class called a small business bond. And persuaded to take a couple of years to, per, per, you know, uh, persuade the regulators uh, to, that this was a legal reading of the Jobs Act, and finally got approval to operate and launch the world's first small business bond marketplace, which is a Jobs Act enabled two sided marketplace that connects small and medium businesses who would otherwise take out bank loans uh, with people in their community uh, who want to invest directly in these businesses by essentially lending them money. And then instead of the business paying back the bank in the form of a bank loan, they're paying back their community. And in that way, the small business bond is intended to sort of be a vehicle for the creation and equitable distribution of the financing profits generated in the act of lending and borrowing, growing your business and paying back the loan. That's, yeah. that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, it's an amazing model, an amazing application of the JOBS Act. And uh, it, it's interesting to me that uh, FINRA and the SEC seem to struggle a little bit with the, the some novel aspects of what you're doing because it, it fits so perfectly. But I'm glad you're doing it and glad they got on board. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, 
you know, a fundamental aspect of this. You say that the alternative for some of them is is bank loans. Uh, some of what people sometimes refer to as bank loans, I'm sure you've seen, is is uh, factoring. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, factoring uh, deals can be, you know, thoughtfully underwritten with good businesses that have, uh, you know, reasonable risk, but it's very expensive. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes I've seen it up to 62% interest rates effectively. Usually they don't quote it that right? They quote it as 2% a month uh, or 3% per invoice or something, but but you know the way that works out, it's scary numbers. Uh, are any of your clients able to use SMBX instead of factoring? That's a good question. Um, we have had a lot of uh, businesses who have refinanced out of existing, um, you know, borrowing, um, you know, relationships that they've had. Mm-hmm. And uh, factoring has certainly been some of them. I'd say credit cards has been a big one. Um, mm-hmm. But I'd say the overwhelming majority of businesses listing bonds on our marketplace uh, would otherwise be taken out term bank loans. Uh, mm-hmm. But anywhere where there are, uh, you know, quasi usurious interest rates, uh, the SMBX can usually help because uh, th- those businesses, because um we really underwrite uh, high quality businesses who are in that position in their growth um, trajectory where, where they're looking to raise growth uh, capital. And we aren't uh, the, the cheapest or the most expensive, uh, we're just competitive. Um, yeah. And the reason why that's the case is because we have a two-sided marketplace. Uh, we try and price risk with our underwriting model uh, appropriately. And, and that's something we really focus on is, is getting the risk profile, of the business, right. And, and pricing the risk appropriately. Uh, I'm really curious about that myself as an old finance guy, I ran a broker dealer for a number of years. Uh, and so let's drill down just a little bit on the pricing. How do you underwrite the loans and, and price, uh, a bond for a, a small business? Yeah, thanks. So uh, we take the business's last two years of financials and we plug it through a risk model that we built um, that's really, ide- you know, built to identify someone who either has qualified for or would qualify for an SBA bank loan. And um, instead, we offer them to issue a small business bond instead of taking out the bank loan. Um, it's also worth noting that we uh, do benchmark our rates to Fed rates, uh, since there is a cost to to to, to capital. Um, and between those sort of two key variables, the uh, underlying risk profile of the business, um, as captured within their financial performance history and debt service coverage ratio, and the other financial metrics you would use to evaluate the risk profile of a business. Um, mm-hmm. And then based on the cost of capital that would be otherwise deployed elsewhere um, as captured within, uh, you know, Fed rates. Fascinating. Fascinating. And uh, it it seems to be working. Give us a little sense of an, an example, even if it's hypothetical, of how, what the pricing is looking like. It, it, as I was looking at the site, it looks like interest rates are ranging from what did I see? Nine, 10, 11 percent. Is that typical or did I just catch it on the wrong day? No, you're you're right. Our rates are always going to be generally. Uh, so we've been in business for three years and the rates have always been between uh, about seven and 10 percent. Uh, you're, you're never going to get rates lower than probably six percent. And mm-hmm. if you can borrow from a bank uh, or get debt financing elsewhere for lower, you should go do it. And Mm -hmm. likewise, if the risk profile of the borrower is above 10 or 10 and a half or 11%, they're probably better off going somewhere else and trying to to raise, you know, maybe from a digital lending platform or so on. We really sit- Cabbage or something? Yeah, exactly. Cabbage on deck and so on. We we really sit in the middle, uh, uh, sort of more at the top of the pyramid 
for folks who would take out um, a, a bank loan. And I can give you an example of it. Um, we had, we a, right now we have a listing on our marketplace. It's a, a well-known San Francisco kind of like little cute wine shop and they make hoagies and they, you know, had a business that's been up and running now uh, since COVID and, you know, generating good revenue and they're ready to take the next step and, 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 and open a, um, a fuller location in a second location. And they wanted to raise $250,000 uh, on our marketplace to help open that location. And uh, they are borrowing at nine and a half percent for 60 months. And so uh, that borrower, uh, you know, is a good borrower and, you know, we, we feel that it's going to be a high quality offering and sure enough, investors are happy about it. It's, it's oversubscribed. I think it's last I looked, it was, um, let's see here on, on May 3rd, it's a, a $327,000. So it's over oversubscribed. People are really excited about the interest rate. Um, but they're also excited about investing directly in the business. Now, before Fed rates rose, that borrower probably would have been borrowing at, at a lower interest rate. So you can kind of see how the financials of the business combined with the, um, the, the movement in Fed rates determine the overall uh, sure. average interest rate on our marketplace. Yeah, what are the companies that's raising on your site now will be pitching at uh, Supercrowd uh, 23? And I think when this airs, I think we'll, we'll release this podcast on Tuesday before the Wednesday event, if all goes well. It may, I, I may be sleepless getting this out, but uh, one of the companies that's scheduled to pitch is uh, on your platform. It's the, uh, um, uh, what is it, Tampon? Tampon, tampon tribe yeah tap, tap on tribe tap on tribe that's yeah. right uh this looks like a great company uh are you familiar with them enough to tell us a little bit about them yeah absolutely huge fan of this company and their mission really aligned with what the smbx is all about um it's a latino owned um women owned small business uh that really is trying to bring a, a, a healthier um you know, uh, women's product to market and, and, and distribute it and get into the hands of folks. A lot of people don't know from what I understand, you know, a, a lot of women's care products are just chock full with toxins. And this is all about bringing a, you know, an affordable organic, um, you know, women's health care product, um, uh, further into the hands of folks. They've having a lot of success and they're looking to grow. And so they're coming to our marketplace to raise up to two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars by issuing a small business bond. Yeah, great company. Yeah, as you look at the dynamic now, you've been doing this for a while, so you're seeing how investors are interacting with your uh, issuers. How how's it working? You know, the the idea with equity crowdfunding uh, is that, you know, interests are aligned. The success of the company is so aligned with the investors that investors offer uh, oftentimes a, a lot of moral and practical support, uh, you know, so often shopping at local businesses and, and that sort of thing. What are you seeing in your experience with bondholders? Yeah, that's a great question. It gets to the the question of really what is the investor profile uh, of our early adopters, folks who are buying bonds for the first time, and in many cases, uh, almost half the time, coming back and buying more bonds. Um, so, you know, when we first launched, nobody knew anything about the SMBX. There had literally never been a small business bond issued, and we didn't have any performance history, or frankly, at that time, very much money. <laughs> And, and so nobody cared about the SMBX. No one knew anything about the SMBX and, and why should they? But what we found is people care about their local bagel shop. They care about you know, their local brewery, children's shoes, and so on. They already use these products. And these businesses already have Instagram followings and, and a core customer base that, that, that already loves uh, what they're offering them, whether it's beer or great food or women's healthcare products or bagels. And so what we saw to begin with is really uh, just uh, recruit a high quality issuer, small business bond issuer, business who had what we call a fanatic base or, or a, a business with a high belovability factor. 
and just have them tell their customers that they were selling a small business bond instead of bagels and then try and recruit, you know, ha have the issuer recruit the other side of the marketplace, um, you know, as their customers. Uh, but after we were alive for a while, we saw a couple things. Number one, folks who had come for one business to invest in one offering were starting to invest in new businesses on the marketplace. Um, and that's because, you know, once you start getting paid principal and interest monthly, you realize that the 10 or 20 or $100 you uh, had invested in the business, now that money is growing as you're getting paid back, not just the principal, but the interest. And mm -hmm. so that was a good sign for us. And so some of those fanatics are increasingly turning into kind of return focused investors, if we can call them that, who are actively viewing themselves as building diversified portfolios of small business bonds. We like that. That's a good sign. We also saw folks who didn't come necessarily for one business, but more for, as you kind of alluded to before, the mission of the types of businesses listing on our marketplace. Uh, there is a certain type of business that stands for a certain type of product that we would not list on our marketplace. And we've, we've had that. But you see businesses like Tampon Tribe that do stand for, for what we believe in, uh, for healthy living, for, for high quality products that add value to people's lives that make them healthier, that that are sustainable, that do good for the folks who are who are, who are using the products, and I would call those people ethicists. That type of investor is coming, investing in a world that they want to support with their unused money, and that that's something that is core to our mission as well. You know, when we looked at the current banking industry. Um, the current financial industry, you know, you realize that, you know, all of us store our unused money in a zero interest bank account. The bank takes our money because we fund our bank and mm -hmm. they lend it out to small businesses in the form of small business loans. We have no say who they lend it to, what kind of world our unused money is used to create and support. Um, and then on top of it, you know, the bank keeps the loans by lending out our money. We're not against banking by any means. I have friends who are in banking. Uh, our backgrounds are in banking, at least my two co-founders are. Um, but we just thought, you know, what if you could decide for yourself what kind of world you wanted to support with your unused money and you could earn profits in the process of doing it? That's really what the small business bond is about. Now, you can decide to invest in healthy, in the case of Tampon Tribe and in, you know, women's healthcare products that, that, that are toxin free. And you can earn principal and interest, make money in the process of doing it. And so that's that's a world that we believe in. Now, yeah, fantastic. Well, I, I am thrilled uh, to see what you're doing, what you're accomplishing, how you're scaling and growing. Uh, this is such a powerful innovation. What do you see as your superpower? My superpower... You know, this, although uh, entrepreneurs by definition are usually narcissists, this also, I have to say, Devin, throws in the face of the uh, the humility you're supposed to exercise on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. <laughs> um, superpower is, um, number one, I think the superpower that I have, I share with my other two co-founders, uh, we are incredibly stubborn. There, we, we got rejected by the regulators twice and had a lot of adverse things happen to the company as we were trying to launch. You know, we launched and the next month COVID hit. And that was after struggling for two years to get regulatory approval on the small business bond. Um, and any startup veteran knows that, you know, you're gonna have good days and bad days, um, but uh, being stubborn and just keep going because you're driven by the idea that what you're building will exist. It's just a question of whether or not you are worthy enough to be the one to bring it into existence. Uh, what we're doing at the SMBX will exist, whether it goes by SMBX or another name. Um, and so for us, being stubborn is, is, is key to that, um, to push through, whether it's COVID or recession or regulatory troubles, whatever, although we haven't had regulatory troubles, just you know, getting, getting regulatory approval uh, was the trouble initially. And so uh, just keep going is I think a superpower. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, probably the fanciest or the shiniest of them, um, but uh, being steadfast, stubborn, and uh, convicted in what you're doing, I think is key. 
The other thing that is, I, I won't speak for my co-founders on this, but um, if you look at the, now we're going to really wax philosophical here on you, mm -hmm. uh, but you're trapped already because I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at the, in my past work as a bad finance professor and, and, and researcher, I was looking at uh, dynamical systems theory, uh, systems that are evolving. Uh, under conditions of high order nonlinearity or what you would often call chaos. And you see that systems that are perpetually poised at the edge of chaos are usually the best equipped to uh, evolve and create a beneficial trait that leads to the creation of a new species. And another word for that is, is, is perversion. Um, I think when we were creating the small business bond, uh, we were wanting to create a bond, but it's not really a bond. We were wanting to do crowdfunding, but is it exactly, maybe, maybe not. And so I think a real superpower that when you're creating a, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur, when you're creating something is being able to look at things, recombinate them and create something new. Because we oftentimes think of something new coming out of ex nihilo, like out of nowhere, it just was born out of the mind of, Elon Musk or, or, or C Jobs and so on. But I don't think that's actually true. I think you're usually better off being kind of a scavenger and taking the existing you know, things that are around like the Jobs Act and a bond marketplace and loans and recombinating them, refashioning them to create a new species of, in our case, a financial product uh, that has new traits and has new capacities to do new things that it wasn't capable of before. So I'd say the, the ability to kind of recombinate things and think creatively um, was helpful for, for, for me and my co-founders when we were creating the Small Business Fund. Yeah, as you think about that uh, ability to, to see and execute on, uh, you know, recombinating, let, let's drill down on that just a little bit. Um, Obviously, you see SMBX as a great example of how you did that, bringing together these disparate ideas of small business loans, bond markets, and regulation crowdfunding in a novel combination. Um, if you were you know, talking to your team now uh, and trying to coach them on looking for those opportunities around the next corner. How would you coach them to think, to approach life and business, to develop that skill? Good question. I, it, generally speaking, rely on what you know. We all at some point develop uh, expertise. Um, because we've been doing stuff that we're interested in, right? You always spend the most time, uh, hopefully, in your free time at least, doing the things that you're most interested in. So you develop these really subtle skill sets. It's not always just a matter of, you know, whether you're the best tennis player or the best financial engineer. It, it's often much more subtle than that. And um, I think, you know, that's why investors, professional investors will often look for entrepreneurs who have been in a field at the proper distance in that field for some long time and are able to think creatively within that to recombinate. And um, so, so I would say rely on what you know, and then um, you want to take in some other input that is from outside that field. Um, you think of some of the greatest innovations in music that have been made uh, have been made from bringing something that really didn't belong within that musical genre into it. Mm -hmm. And boom, a new style of music was born. And I would say we could take, we could learn a lot from that. Um, so maybe, you know, looking outside finance for something non-financial is a great way of recombinating a new financial instrument. Um, I don't know, but, you know, at least filling 20 or 30 percent of your brain from inputs from things that don't belong in the field that you're trying to operate in, I would think is the best way of doing it. Yeah, fantastic. 
Well, Ben, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I really appreciate your valuable insights and for your sharing the story with us. Before we wrap up, I wonder if you'd just take a minute and give people a, you know, a really super high level, uh, you know, two or three step guide to investing on the platform and also to applying for uh, to be a, an issuer. Uh, to walk us through that. And then if you don't mind uh, tagging onto that, some instructions for how people could uh, connect with you on social media or otherwise. Sure. So uh, you can go to vsmbx.com, T-H-E-S-M-B-X.com. If you're interested in learning more about issuing a small business bond, and you can go in and apply right there and set up a, an appointment to chat with uh, one of our team members who would be delighted to chat with you and talk to you more about uh, what all it involves and, and see if whether it's the right fit for you. Um, for folks who want to register accounts, you can go on in about 10 minutes and register an account, uh, click on a business that you want to invest in, learn more about the business. You can see the business's um, you know, uh, financial history. You can see the bond prospectus we have built for every business. You can see how much has already been invested in the business. And if you click into the actual offering fields itself, you can see based on what you've invested, how much you can expect uh, to return, uh, uh, to, to earn in a return uh, if, if all goes well. And we have a little calculator there that you can play with. And you can invest in as little as $10 We've had folks who've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars on our marketplace and folks who've only invested uh, $10. We believe in the democratization of finance. And so whether you have only 10 bucks or more to invest, you should go in and do it and, and start earning uh, some fixed income um, by investing in business in a business you know and love or a business that you want to just invest in. Um, let's see, um, if you wanna connect with me, um, I am on LinkedIn and the SMBX is also on, on Instagram. I have to admit, I am not uh, the, the biggest uh, social media guy, but I do, I, I do follow it um, through my company. And so you can connect with me on LinkedIn, ping me. Um, you can also send me an email at benjamin at the SMBX.com. And I'm always happy to chat or grab a cup of coffee. Fantastic. Well, Benjamin, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We love what you're doing and want to wish you every success. Thanks so much, Devin. Appreciate your work uh, that you're doing to support the industry that uh, we're building here together and best wishes. All righty. Let's do some good. Thank you for tuning in to the Superpowers for Good show. Twice each week, we host changemakers who share their impact, insights, and superpowers don't miss another episode. Subscribe today at superpowersforgood.com. That's superpowers, number four, good.com. Be super empowered. Get your copy of the book, Superpowers for Good, as an ebook, audiobook, paperback, or hardcover edition via your favorite online retailer. Interested in having me speak to your company, organization, or association? Visit devonthorpe.com. Then let's talk. Now, keep using your superpowers for good. Together, we can reverse climate change, improve global health, and eradicate poverty.